Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Strat Chat. Welcome back. We've got the World Championship semifinals on our hand. I am so hyped right now. I need to get. I need to go in, into some storylines. They're going to finish the draft. We'll talk about this later. But we got to talk about all the things that are in play for this game. First off, World Championship semifinals. It's a huge deal. Obviously, China versus China in one bracket. Korea versus Korea in the other. We will get that destined matchup of China versus Korea in the finals, which we've been robbed of a few times. So I definitely am looking forward to this. Make no mistake that these guys take a huge amount of nationalistic pride in being the team that can represent their team in, in the finals and have that chance to compete. Some of these guys have had that opportunity. Some of them are coming back saying, I want to do even better. Zhao Hu, the most decorated player in Chinese in LPL history. Knight, who is coming back into this tournament as a returning LPL champion, but on a new team, a team that was constructed to win the world championship. They think that they were just one player away and that Knight was that player, an MVP caliber player to join their team. And who's to, who's to argue with them? They are up and down the roster, just better than everyone on Weibo Gaming. Weibo Gaming, and you can see that in the tournament play this year, 0-6 in the LPL tournament structure. BLG has just annihilated them. When it comes down to it, BLG just goes and finds this other gear and annihilates. And speaking of that gear, we've got a Jax bin pick, so I'm super excited about this already. Jiahu and Knight is probably the marquee matchup. You have to assume it's there. Everyone thinks that bin is going to stomp on Breathe. Is there a way, you know, have they said that we're going to just pick counter picks into Jax? And has Breathe just been working on his Poppy and Gragas all week? preparing for this moment so that he could try to stifle the Jacks. I don't think it can be done. I think that's a losing strategy, but we'll see. It's definitely Weibo who needs to prove that they can that they can do this. If you remember, last year Weibo stole this opportunity from BLG, right? They were the team that went into the finals. T1 T1 had to go through Weibo and everyone thought that BLG was the better team. And I want to show you what that means to these players. This is the week one game of this year. This is BLG stomping top esports, another top contender. And you see this little thing right here? Look at this. I just wanna highlight this little spot right here. This team has had its sights on T1 and the World Championship since February. This is what, I mean, even before then, since they left the stage last year, they wanted to come back and get a piece of the champs, the guys that they didn't have a chance or that they feel like they didn't have enough of a run against, that they could have done better, that they left something on the table. Bin says he's coming back to this event with regrets that he, he didn't feel like he did everything he could have done. I think he's gonna do it. I think he's going to absolutely steamroll on Jax. Like how, who's going to stop him? It's going to be an insanely hard Way to set this game up. You know, they've done a lot for themselves with Renata and Kalista, an aggressive bot lane. They've got a counter pick in the top lane, and they're basically going to put all their eggs into this Yone basket. It'll be interesting to see where game one goes. Talking about a couple other spots on the roster, Crisp. I love his aggressive playstyle. On is equally aggressive. They both go and they both use Fog of War to their advantage. They use misinformation to their advantage. Which one of them is going to be willing to call a bluff? Right? We talk about Game Theory Optimal a lot on this channel about making plays. You can't just do the play when it's right because then they'll know that they need to back off. You need to show aggression and steal, if it's like a poker analogy, steal those blinds every once in a while. Make it look like you don't have a strong hand when you actually are strong. You need to be able to mix up your game, especially when you're talking about the fourth time that these guys have met in the past four months. You have to mix up your strategies. You need to have something new coming to the table even if you are just up and down the roster better than your opponents. And maybe Tarzan has something to say about that. But honestly, of the 10 players in this game, Tarzan, the only Korean player, he's been in China for a while, but you know, I'm not going to say that they necessarily have the smoothest communication with their team. It seems like a lot of this game may come down to Tarzan having to carry. And in this game, he's got Brand. Maybe he's going to do something for it. Other, other spots to talk about. W, you know, Weibo Gaming knows that they've won against everyone except BLG. So they should be super confident 
in their own abilities. But now they need to figure out how do we dissect, how do we analyze this team? And that's why people work with analysts. That's why, why they work with coaches. That's why people work with people with coaches like me to try to find out what's that next level? What's that next adjustment that your team can make so that you can exploit your opponent's tendencies, become unpredictable and try to work. That's what we do on this channel. By the way, I'm surrealist. I was, I don't know if you guys can see this. But uh, we were heralding FlyQuest. We we're super proud of the effort that, that they have done in this tournament. I've been coaching for 20 years. We've been doing League of Legends primarily for the past eight years. We tried to make a bid for franchising back when the LCS started that. But here we are. We're, we're doing a YouTube channel. We're bringing it to you guys instead. This is, this is what we do here. If you guys like the content, make sure you support us. It's what allows us to keep the lights on. Other storylines. Last thing's going in. Night. Quoting. All right. Last year was a pity. I can still recall how it played out. Back then, I was on JDG. Now I've got this new team. He knows that he's returning as an LPL champion. He's returning as a former MVP. He might be the best player that LPL has ever put out, and by all means, everyone says he is. This team has been built to win a, a world championship. Now, this is one of my favorite parts of the game right here, looking at the, at the faces. Who looks nervous? Who's locked in? Anytime that we get a chance to see the players, we can see it at times. We saw it on Busio. We saw it with Masu last week unfortunately the moment was too big the moment was too big for them and you know when you have rookie of the year rookie of the split those guys are strong players they're going to be great i hope they take it as a learning opportunity i think that they had enough time to mature going through the system right coming up through academy uh jojo pion was was the example that i don't like that he his rise was so meteoric that it's almost like well, who's there left to beat me? And yeah, he got stomped at that first MSI, but for him and for Danny, both coming up and just immediately stomping the league, that wasn't good for them because they had to learn the trials and the tribulations and what it means to, lo what is it like to lose? How do you handle the fandom? How do you handle the pressure of these situations? All they really knew was how to get destroyed on an international stage. And they went straight from winning everything to getting annihilated, right? You want to have that, that push and pull, that, that strong, you know, I don't want to say easy road, but like a boxer climbing up through the ranks. First you go and you get your confidence. Then you have to fight some real competition, but you don't go and straight up fight Mike Tyson right away, right? Like that's just going to get you annihilated and you're, you're never going to want to box again, right? That's kind of what happened to Danny is what it seems like. And Jojo Pion kind of shut down into this, I'll just stomp in NA. Didn't give it. It's by all me by all reports was not a good teammate at Cloud Nine, and the culture at Cloud Nine kind of fell apart this year. You heard Reaper talking about playing StarCraft and not really caring about practice time. Blabber and Fudge had already been called out for for not practicing with the team. Uh, what we need to get in North America, and you guys can help. Positive culture precedes positive results. You need to have the culture first. So I have a mission for you guys. Hashtag strat chat for this. In your games, can we be better to our teammates? Let's, let's not just mute all, but let's actually congratulate our teammates and our opponents for plays that they did well. So much of this game, you know, League of Legends has been voted as the most toxic game in the world. Let's prove that it's not. And do we want to be kings of the ashes i don't i want to be the kings of a glorious game i want to be on the top of a game that's heralded as the best game in the entire world we can make that happen by being more positive in our games give shout outs make sure you're honoring people uh tell them when they do something nice right and when they make a mistake rather than chewing them out nice try let's get them next time next turn you know you'll get them next time you're doing great keep it up you're fine we got this anything Anything that can be a positive influence on your team will be a positive influence on the game and is something that we can do. I think that's our mission, to try to make the game better. We try to do it from a strategical and analytical point of view, but as a community, we can try to do it from a social point of view, make it a better place, place to be. So that's my charge to you. I hope you guys take that to heart. If, uh, you, know, if you can do it day by day or even game by game, you, those uh, friends of the channels, 
friends of the channel know that we like to do things in a best of three. When you try to improve, right? When we talk about training Tuesday, on Tuesdays we stream training. What are we trying to improve in our game? And we always do it in a step-by-step measured process. And then when we do bring it into games, we do it in a best of three format where we say, okay, this game, I want to have a, an exemplary level of focus on this one task. And that one task, try to do it well. And if with that singular focus, you should be able to accomplish your goals. And then as you do it more and more, if you do it two games in a row, you can say, all right, I won my best of three. Now I can go compete and focus on competing, knowing that I have this new skill in my toolbox. We can do that with culture as well. Right, little by little. If you're if you're the type of person that that needs to do it step by step, you can take it step by step. You know, whatever it is, just be a little bit better than you were, and and we can make this community better. All right, looks like we're finally into game. All right, Renata, Callista. This is one of the best, probably the best <clears throat> lane that people try to get into drafts because <clears throat> it's two faceted. One, it makes you. It guarantees you a point of strength in the bot lane. The Callista is <clears throat> against almost every other matchup, unless the enemy team wants to go Draven, is going to be favored. <clears throat> Renata and Callista synergize together because of their passives, so they're going to be looking for short trades at first, just using the W passive to hit hit, get that on hit proc back off. They both have that on hit proc. So they're going to be looking to get that in early chip damage, look to get more of those and more, especially if any of the key cooldowns go down from Billy Billy, right? Nico and Varus are very much oriented in their laning based on their E. Their Q comes from damage, but they use their E for poke and to control the fight and make sure that they're not giving up more than they need to. So it will be interesting to see whether or not they go for this. What I think I'm watching is Callista going to the top lane and they're sticking Varus. So Bin is not going to have a lane at the moment is he going to go down and share experience with Varus? this is one of the best adaptations you want to give the gold to the Varus because he scales with gold better Jax does scale with levels but there's no way that you want to stick him up in a lane with the Callista. so you're just going to go in here uh, predominantly they slow push and they stack and then they push on and they go for a dive bottom this has been the scripted play and it's up to the jungler to watch what's going on in that bot lane all right, if you're the jungle, if you're the jungler in this, you're watching to see are they shoving or are they holding the wave? And that makes the difference in your call about how you're going to respond. Like in top lane, they decided not to stack as much and they say, hey, let's go get this wave in all the way right now. That force has been to come up a little bit earlier. Hold on, I got completely duped here. This is totally Nico in the bot lane. I'm looking at the minimap. Are we just going to stack and push? Are we going to create some sort of uh, fast push? Are we going to try to get a four stack wave before we go in? This, what they're doing in the bot lane right now, is holding on to as many minions as possible so that when you do go to hit this turret, there are so many minions that you just get to rip into that turret. And that's exactly what you see, right? Six casters and the cannon. These things are just ripping through it. You're going to get two plates for yourself right here. They're going to get the whole wave. Uh, one of the things that you're looking for on this teleport is to get back in time for the cannon experience because that can be the difference between hitting level 3, sometimes hitting level 2 depending on the spot. Wow, been flashing for XP here. I love this. Now, can they punish it? Right, they just sent Poppy down bottom. He saw that it was... He saw that it was on the map. But he knows that the chances of them diving are pretty low, and he probably has Counter-Strike back up again. And he's trying to use Grasp to try to get as much health back in these situations. But see, this is the benefit of the stacked wave in bottom. I'm wondering, there's a chance that Weibo was also fooled by, by the Nico Jax. Nico Jax, if you go in there and you say, hey, we're going to slam this wave in, right? We're not going to stack it. We're just going to go straight up. And Jax up here just hides then they might say, oh, they're doing the normal thing, which is to put the top laner and bot laner together and they're just gonna shove it, so let's teleport early. And now we have some potential plays. All right, let's see first answer. Skarner, one of the best champions in the game at this situation. Elk did draw the aggro, goes down to one health. Skarner picking up, that's a fully charged turret dealing maximum damage. So they're gonna come back in, they're gonna just take this chip on, onto the turret. They're going to let Varus stay in range to get the gold by himself. No one else is going to hit it. Again, it's all about getting as much gold right here as possible. 
So interesting at the start, they end up surviving on the push. Skarner doesn't get the action. You know, they do push Poppy out. They get three plates for themselves, and that's the difference right here. So that's that's what you get for, for these positive lanes. It's very interesting that they opted to put Callista on the other side of the map. And then were they fooled? Were they fooled into just sending in a crash and just getting the rebound? Some of these situations, what they're looking for is to get that early crash, have the wave coming back out, and then they can set up lanes and potentially hold a freeze against someone like uh, like Jax, if you want to go into pr into detail, you'll have to watch ProView, but you'll watch how Jax kind of holds onto this until he has enough experience and enough freedom that he can try to push out. And you'll notice that they're going to call other resources over, like the Skarner, when he's ready to push out. This right here, known as Pendulum Macro, or we call it Pendulum Macro, when you go side to side as far as your strong side right whatever side wants to push and you only push one side at a time the jungler goes and clears his camps on that side that way he can be recruited if needed and this is one of the best ways to be super efficient in the jungle while also protecting your team this is something that FlyQuest actually did better than any team in na history this side to side macro plays strong basically they do a 60 to 90 second stint on each side of the map and then they reverse fields and think of it just like any sports those of you who have played on sports teams, switching fields can be a very potent way to open up space in the game and allow you some more freedom on how to move. So when you go side to side and you say, all right, we're strong over here, then we flip it over here. If the other team makes a mistake in defending, then you might find some windows for yourself. And, and all they want right now for windows, they've got the extra plates in the bot lane, three of these, and they've got jacks at level five and counting. So. Both situations, they're happy with the prize that they've gotten. And if if this was any sort of prepared draft from Weibo with the intent of countering BLG, it doesn't look like they've accomplished their goal. Smolder is par with Yone on the farm. Happy to, to pick this champion into the Yone because you basically can cast your Flap Flap to get away from any of his engages. He's just going to go and try to outscale. This is something we've seen before. Uh, Trovi's been outspoken about not wanting to play Smolder, but if he's OP, he's OP, right? And in some situations, you just want to be that over-the-top champion. Smolder is the new over-the-top champion. There's no questioning it. It is it is the endgame champion. You get Elder buff uh, at the end of the game, right? And we're talking for these guys, 22 minutes, right? So they're going to be looking at two items plus boots is when they're going to be happy. And when you look at the whole team, everyone... Fits that mold, right? We're talking about sterics and then either a tank supportive item. Usually that's what you want to do if you want to match pace with your smolder. Um, sometimes we see sterics gauge. We tend to not like sterics as much unless you're positive that it's going to be brawl versus brawl. But with Callista, Brand, and Renata on the other side of the team, I don't know that we want sterics gauge. Also, you don't necessarily want to be as the most likely target to get hit by Renata's ultimate. You don't want to be dealing maximum damage to your teammates. So having something like Locket second, Zeke's second uh, can totally be an option. And it allows you to keep a pace with the solo laners. Because once we have Triforce Zonyas completed, which is what we're assuming here. By the way, nice little tech. This is a jack of all trades build. Between Merc Treads, Zonyas, your Doran's Blade, and your Trinity Force you will have 10 stacks on your jack of all trades. And that cooldown is so nice for Jax, especially who gets to have extra counter strikes in the fight, extra leap strikes even, just the ability to jump through. And it seems like your W is on cooldown right with that Sheen proc. So it's just a very nice build for Jax. Uh, I don't know if all the Jaxes in the tournament have been doing it, but this is 100% jack of all trades territory. There is a little bit of flexibility in Cosmic Insight. I could see a world where you might want it, but uh, it's it's cool to shout out new runes, some pages that people have may not have been thinking about. All right, side-to-side -side macro. Jax is on the weak side. You see him teleport over here. Team was strong. This is potentially punishable. And in fact, if Weibo has perfect information, they may want to go take this. I'm surprised that they're not contesting because Poppy still has their teleport. Yone had the push in the mid lane. This was 100% an opportunity to get in there. I. They must have felt pinned to this turret, like they don't want to give up first turret blood, but man, this is so bad for them right now. It feels like they're just trying to react and not getting that much in return. 
right? Like where where is their where is their strength coming out of this? They're recalling second. The recalls got delayed. They are going to lose this turret. They did lose the dragon. They lost a void grub. Jax is totally comfortable up in the top lane. It'll be interesting to see to see if they have a mid game plan for this situation but like how do you really plan against this scaling you play Varus for a dominant lane Varus Nico is going to be such a strong lane Skarner to help get you through the early game the best CC kit oftentimes we see Sejuani as an answer and they try to go toe, toe to toe but with Brand they're saying no we want we want carry potential over here we want extra sources of damage and it makes sense like this is probably the only position where you can say with any amount of confidence that you have the better player they are outmatched everywhere against blg so that means if you want to win you need your best players to start multiplying their stats and multiplying every their income every multiplier possible to try to get these guys as big as possible and and if if your best player is your jungler or if that's your best chance of winning this matchup then yeah that's who you should funnel your resources into What do you guys think? Does does uh, Weibo have a chance here? I mean, they love to scrap. They love to. They've been battling all year, and this is actually it's something that's worth talking about as well. Weibo seemingly has taken every fight all year with the intent of we can save macro for worlds. We can save macro for the tournament at worlds. Let's get as much team fight repetition as possible so that we are as strong as possible when it gets to worlds there's an argument for that there's also an argument that would say too much of a good thing is a bad thing uh does that just become your tendency maybe they want it to be their tendency maybe they want to just be the better team fighting team and say hey like let's go and battle against everyone and do it this way the problem is when you play against a team that's up and down the roster just stronger than you they're going to be better than you in those spots oh all right skarner versus yone interaction cool to see that Nice answer. I don't know if that was even an answer by Skarner, but what, ha what has to be the timing there? Skarner needs to ult first, and Xiaohu tried to buffer his ultimate early, and he must have cast it just a moment too early to be in flight and then still get captured. We've talked about it. I don't think Yone is the blue one pick. A lot of teams do because it's been doing exceptionally well uh early on in the tournament it wasn't necessarily a first pick it was more about be getting better draft conditions that made the yone so strong and we see this game that smolder is a totally adequate answer to this champion yeah yone's gonna scale like crazy he's got tons of plays gonna do everything well but smolder's already rocking 107 stacks at just 12 minutes that's only gonna accelerate go faster and faster as he starts getting some cooldown items finishing the trinity force and going from there we hmm. we've seen a couple different builds from smolder going around it will see whether or not he still goes for rapid fire cannon spear of shojin or if we see an essence reaver at some point looks like we're gonna have man immune this game so i doubt we're gonna see essence reaver because in that point of the game that's that's just too much mana we'll see what avenues knight decides to go down Varus going lethality um, Varus is one of the most patched champions in the entire game, and they seem to swap him from lethality to on hit. Supposedly, he's stronger as an on hit champion right now, but what they want is not another carry. They've got Skarner to lock down the front. They just want the maximum upfront damage from Varus so that we can get the executes here from the Smolder. And I absolutely love this. There is no yellow tree going on right here. But one of the things that you can expect from these teams is they will make sure that their cut down versus coup de gras is balanced. Who whose job is it on your team to deal the upfront damage? Right? Who's going to go and say, like, be the chunk on the team? That's Varus's job. That's this. And then we have your Vanguard in the front line that's gonna try to hold off space for the two of these. When we look at team fight formations, they're expecting Varus to deal all the upfront damage and then to have Jax and Smolder especially come and clean up. That's why Varus doesn't want to go on hit. If you go on hit, then he's stuck caring too much about his own life and maximizing his own damage. It's much better in these situations to say, okay, 
I outrange your Callista, your Brand, your Renata. I can get tons of chip damage in to start a fight and get another initiation tool for my team, longer range even than the Nico, and say, hey, this is how we're going to start. Or it's also very good continuation on a Nico engage. If Nico finds a good avenue to come in, and then you have Varus ulting over the top, almost always able to join. And this is the meta, right? A AD carry? Not really AD carry. It's ADS meta, right? Attack damage supports. You want someone that can deal, pump out a reasonable amount of damage, but you haven't seen the carries come from this position. You've seen carrying coming from mid lane. This is in large part due to the change in the experience growth. If you guys missed it, it went up to 95% from 93%. <clears throat> Basically, when you kill a cannon, a cannon's worth 100 experience, how much are you actually getting? It used to be that you got 93 experience, now you get 95. That little bit over the course of the game adds up. It means that they're getting level 6 faster. It means that they're doing more, so you see more carries in the beginning. All right, Weibo, Poppy Spike. <clears throat> BLG, this is called a faint defense, right? Where you're just going in, you're, you're feigning that you're going to play, but you're really just dropping back. There's really no contest here. You're not at your spikes. Remember, we said that we're going to go for two items. They're on one. So they're just happy to give Rift Herald. They're going to go back and say, hey, let's take the scaling option and also erase the ability for them to really put us on a clock. And we'll just take our turret defenses later. What they're normally willing to give is one, two, three. And then maybe you try not to give the tier two turret. They did already lose it, which means Weibo does have a little bit more gold to springboard this composition at this stage in the game and they need to leverage it they basically need to fight for everything no matter what at all times this will be the big target the baron that's coming up renata yone poppy three of the best champions around the pit in the entire game this ultimate might be the best the single best late game team fighting ultimate in the whole game you can swing entire fights right if you imagine hitting the varus or the smolder here or even the jacks you can approach late you can you can dare blg to get into the pit the thing is blg's never going to do it they shouldn't do it at least they can just they'll be happy to keep on scaling they'll they will show up to baron if you decide to baron they don't want to be clumped up to watch yone swing in renata like if renata touches two champions and they get berserked to hit each other that is a free hit for yone to scoop them all up and that is also a free bouncing ultimate from brand so if you're BLG, you need to be talking about these sort of situations and how you're never going to let it happen. You just, you cannot afford to let it happen. All right, so we're going to enter a bit of a lull state from here on because like we said, BLG is basically going to be waiting to about that 22 minute mark. They're going to stack up Man Immune. They want to have two items and boots on Smolder and on Jax. There's really no reason to try to do anything else. Uh, Weibo is trying to push, right? So here we go. Let's see how what the play is. We have Nico pretending to be Varus or Jax. We're not actually trying to get this charge in. Smolder's just going to clear the wave so that they can kill the dragon. You do not care. 90% of that turret can die, and you do not care. 99% of that turret can die. What matters right here, what is happening over there. 1,100 gold into the pocket of the Jax. And they're setting him up to carry. So that will be Trinity Force guaranteed to be done. He'll also have another piece coming up. And here's the answer, right? <clears throat> Enemy team sends four people into the top lane. What do we do? We send one here, one here, and we min defend, right? You defend with the three. You play 3-1-1 one, one for a moment. You play against their aggro push. Poppy's overloaded. Poppy cannot defend on both sides of the map. And the prize is a turret here and a turret here. If you're the Poppy... You have to choose one to defend one. You can't try to defend both. It looked like a little bit of breathe being stuck into two into two <clears throat> responsibilities. Couldn't get either one done, which means that you have solo gold going to Varus, solo gold going to Jax. That's a huge win for BLG. They, they traded one outer turret. That Rift Herald was worth one and a half turrets for essentially three because that outer the inner turret on the side lanes is worth so much gold so basically three turrets for one huge win for blg uh, they are looking fantastic for this fight weibo has to get this done so expect them to fight for mid prior right here they're going to try to hold a line of scrimmage in the mid lane but varus on the back of the recently purchased second item goes in and 
one shots the Renata. This is not looking good for Weibo. If you're a Weibo fan, if you're a BLG game fan, you're like, you guys look great. You guys are doing everything. You're picking up all the gold. You survived level one, two, and three shenanigans. You're out rotating. You're getting more gold. You're out farming. Everything that, that could be going right is going right for them right now. So Weibo, how do you force it? I mean, this is your last chance. But honestly, it's probably too late. Two items completed, two items completed. Pre-20 minutes, guys. Pre-20 minutes, BLG already has two items on their carries. Stacked up your mana. That's going to be a tough road. So let's just appreciate <clears throat> how BLG takes their technique. We can start looking at wards. One of the things that you want to look at as a coach or anytime that you're a competitor, you want to look at this game and start thinking about the next game. You don't want to get too invested in the outcome of what's going on here, but start analyzing what, where are the elements that we can change? Or even if we get into this situation again, what do they do, right? A very common play is to get a deep mid lane ward, get a deep beach ward, and then try to get something else over here and have sort of a triangle of vision in this quadrant that affects how conspicuously you enter into that quadrant and prepare for Baron, right? BLG is willing to take the slow road. They're happy to take these fights now, go for Dragon. We're gonna let you play off here. Notice that they have all this vision protecting that area. So if Weibo decides to try to steal it, they'll be happy to do it. Now, this could be good for Weibo Gaming because you will not get a better chance to fight them than right now at this Dragon. So fight for mid prio. They see the rotations, they see the Yone coming over. Fight for Pryo, Yone's gonna look for a good angle, expect something coming down in this spot, but BLG, happy to just play it slow. Happy to let Dragon leash, they're not gonna go over here. If you go here, then you give the answer of the turret and it's too easy for them to take it. So they end up hiding in this bush. This ward right here, super important. You can expect these teams you know, to fight over this line of scrimmage. You see control ward here, control ward here. This is meant to hold that line and say, hey, how much are you willing to give us Weibo, with the turret available as a mini objective for themselves, says, hey, like, we'll threaten this turret a little bit. Some of BLG comes over to, to collect the wave, and that's enough time for Weibo to step in. So really good timing by them to find any amount of priority there, right? Fighting for mid, using it to step into the bush. This is something that blue team has a little bit of an advantage for based on the shape of the map on this side that they're able to get in and out of this angle a little bit better. This becomes a little bit of a tough choke point to work with. But they're going to leash it up again. This time Poppy's out of range. They see Poppy on the wave. Uh, Jack's got the prio here, but you notice that Poppy's just cleaning up part of that wave. I love this. Leaving a slow pushing wave in the bot lane, not trying to clear everything. If you clear everything, the minions will just collide right here. Instead, you just keep some of the wave there. And now that will slow push and become a point of strength for you. You don't care about enemy team scaling because it's already max scaling. It's, o it's already only going to get worse is what I mean to say. Hold on, isolated fight, been on one side, gets picked off. So Weibo actually doing this well. I have to give huge props to Poppy to breathe on Poppy for this play, guys. BLG will be super happy to take the next fight, by the way. They could have been fine to just not take this fight and they would have been okay. But because Jax pushed in and you end up leaving that minion wave, something like seven versus three, it will continue pushing, but it will push slowly. And now you're gonna see that this wave right here is gonna start reinforcing. This is a potential game ender right now as you siege Baron. You're going to get the Baron. Enemy team needs to respawn and deal with the spot wave because if they don't, then this will be big enough and approaching their turret as you go and, and collect it. <clears throat> the threat is there in this situation with all the gold that they have they are most definitely just going to take the baron recall spend their money and go for another shop they're not going to try to push their advantage here with this much missing health so it does mean that we're going to have collections on the wave but this early teleport right not waiting for the wave means that they're able to get into position poppy holds down the the front line gets an alt off Min channel, right, gets that off right in the beginning. They push out the Skarner. And now if there's any amount of call that says go for the dragon, that would be a mistake. Now here's the issue. Weibo can charge forward and chase these guys. It forces Jax to chase them. They end up making the call. Hey, we can turn around and kill the Jax. Kill Bin right now, 3v1. Don't let him come and clean up a fight. That is one of the mistakes that we saw last round. 
that burn damage. Tick, 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 tick. That they were taking fights and allowing Bin to show up later and just clean things up, right? And he will carry in those situations. So Weibo got exactly what they wanted, the last chance to take a fight. And if you're BLG, you did not need to do this. And that's what we were talking about. They're coming over to this side, happy to let Weibo go for Baron and they'll go second, but that's not what you wanted. You didn't want any fights. You just want to continue scaling. Keep on playing that 1-3-1 and keep on setting yourself up where if they go for Dragon, we'll go for Baron. If they go for Baron, we'll fight them, right? And that's the situation that you've earned for yourself by scaling this much. So definitely a huge blunder in strategy to say, hey, we're going to fight right now because we haven't finished all of the spikes that we were talking about. We said maybe it would be too late. Yahoo, going to have to snap back here. Skarner dealing some amount of damage saying, hey, no, we're going to go this. But one of the downsides to that is you end up letting the Yone stack up Q3 a second time, uh, but ends up not mattering. Hold on. Ooh, no. All, right, all these cooldowns are down. If the whole team were on the call together and in position, you could say, hey, Yone, buy us some time by stretching that leash as long as possible. The full five seconds. We'll wait for them to use as many cooldowns as possible on you. This is one of our stronger moments. Having just picked up the Baron, we've got strong wave push. We could actually try to punish your cooldowns and take a fight after Yone's down. The problem is that, like, how do you find that call? Yone's supposed to be your be-all, end-all, ride-or-die carry for this, for this draft. And so how are you supposed to take a fight without your Yone? It feels kind of risky. So they end up just pushing, resetting, saying we'll live to fight another day. We're still up 2k gold. We can take the next fight. That huge loss at the Dragon was a big deal, guys, right? Instead of just losing Dragon, you lost Dragon plus three champions. That's the difference, right? That's the amount of gold. And now you're talking about second and extra items coming along, right? You're going to start seeing Iceborne Gauntlet picked up. You're going to start seeing that Quicksilver's already picked up. We're going to have other elements. Maybe, maybe we even say a third item on Callista. If you can get those before three items and you say we're fighting three items versus two, then that's your spike. That's your spot. They're going to look for it. And you've opened that door now if you're BLG. All right, Dragon's up. Baron will not be up in time. BLG has to give this one. There's no way in the world you can test this. Jax is up in the top side. No reason to stretch for this play. I don't expect them to go for it, even with three items on Smolder and 279 stacks. I honestly don't think that they need to go for this fight. Instead, let the enemy team spend 30 seconds here. Use that time to go and chip this turret down and see if you can get Jax enough time here. Especially, so check this out. They're going to make this push, and then they're going to rotate this way. This is the way to max, like, feign your defend your defense of the dragon pit. Hold on, Yone teleported in behind. This is a huge angle for them. All right, full extraction. They have to retreat to the left. No, they just hold their line of scrimmage here. Weibo saying that we want the prize to be dragon. Honestly, they probably could have tried to chase that fight down. Say, this is our chance to, to win the game, is to win this fight right here. Happy throwing the ultimate from Fog to get Jax off the turret. Jax says, okay, I'm going to recall anyways. We're good. Zonia's will be picked up. Now, based on this uh, drive and Sundered Sky, this might actually be a Cosmic fight. Hold on. He stays in. He, does he... Was he CC'd for that? They tried to chain CC him to hold him up. Said he couldn't leash back. Normally, you can get back. Yone's E-Leash is one of the most broken abilities because you can disjoint so many things using it. They end up not getting enough. So we end up with full resets. Dragon versus Dragon. Continue scaling. Advantage BLG on anything that happens that just says the game goes longer. If you're Weibo, how do you force a fight? Well, forking is off the question because we have syncopated spawn times. So how are you going to force a fight here? You like the pit, right? These champions all like it. Callista can get you in and out of sticky situations. Poppy can control space really well. So Weibo should come up and say, we're going to approach this area, force you to, to come to us and make this happen and they should be putting all their chips in the in the pot right now they have to say all in all or nothing this is our time we're not going to get a better spot 
maybe maybe they don't feel that way. Maybe they feel like Renata, if Renata ever hits level 16, then they'll be fine, right? That'll match up. That'll coincide with 18s from everybody else. So that would be like way off in the future, right? We're talking about four, 40 plus minute games. Maybe they think that they're really good here, but this is their their spot, right? The difference in the time of the Berserk here, the ability to hold people in place that much longer, you're in a pit, your brand, you've got the Pryo here, you're in, you've chunked it down, you've got tons of damage. Notice that they went two Borks and a Leandries early, so they have tons of objective control. They say, hey, we can go find the fight onto Bin. Look at that, the corridor, but Bin gets out. They survive being... Ulted by Renata in the face, which means the play's off now, right? That's That's got to be the end. That was Callista ultimate and Renata ultimate in exchange for just Smolder and Varus. Uh, they were able to hold enough space, Varus becoming the peel in that situation. One of the reasons that we love the supportive carries in this meta. Been saying, no, I found my angle. Boom, Varus over the top, dealing that max damage with the execute from the W. Skarner getting a flash W and pull means that uh, Smolder's going to clean up the rest of this fight. Weibo took their shot. I, lo I like that they took their shot. It's, I'd actually love to see this uh, top lane. Yeah, we'll, we'll check it out again when the, the game resets. <clears throat> We're at 30, about, it was about 30 minutes into the game, that Renata ultimate. I want to see exactly how they approached that, that pit. We'll break it down for you. So here's that replay. <clears throat> Been finding that good flank angle, going deep, way behind the rest of the team. Understanding that Yone's most likely going to try to be in a scoop and score sort of position. Goes up uh, to the backmost position. Beautiful play by Shin there. <clears throat> Flash W into the R to get that one pick, right? You don't need to get everyone. Don't be greedy. Just get the guy that's right in front of you. We see so many Scorners miss their ultimates by trying to do too much. All right, so Baron in tow. We're going to see 4-1 adjacent pushes. Again, <clears throat> Weibo, it's only going to get worse, so they're going to try to find as many angles that they can. Breathe is flashing in. He says, we've got a knockup. Yone can scoop and score, but this is the support that was still able to get some amount of damage back, so we're going to see BLG take this fight. Renata ultimate through the corridor <clears throat> means that it does peel the Skarner. Uh, good job there. You see them retreating to the right, but now they're in full scamper mode, which means BLG is going to have the prio on this lane with the Baron buff. Forces out Callista ultimate as well. This dragon's not spawning for 32 seconds, so there is not enough time to just hold that line of scrimmage. They're going to have to reset. BLG does not want to go into the deep vision right here. Right, you don't want to go into anything on their side that you don't have perfect information on. You're just going to take your prize here on the mid side. They're actually not even going to go for more, knowing that the resets got off. So really good, patient call there from this team smolder actually teleporting back to pick up that wave right off the bat but the turret did go down so that is a potential spot that can be pushed for advantage from weibo smolder needs to step back and shop has his quicksilver two swifties saying hey we do not want to be locked up in this fighting situation we want to find our own terms and our own terms early On line of scrimmage, both teams get a control word in here. They're going to take this fight on the return side. Redemption popped. That locket as well. So they don't take anything from the smolder. I like with the Nico games right here. Nico just constantly taking different angles. They even get a couple cooldowns there on the clone, expecting that that might be Jax because Jax has been in that position. A super advanced thing that you can do. And some of these teams might be at this level. I'm, I'm only going to say might. When you scout yourself and figure out your own tendencies and see what could be the answer that they send to us. 
right? What are they going to try to do to exploit us? Are they going to try to, you know, jump on our traditional jump angle? Hold on. Bins by himself. The call is that way. Hey, we can go engage on this guy. Counter strikes down. Nothing else is there. There, they were chasing Poppy. So Bin being down means yeah, you're going to go get Poppy. But now three versus one or three versus three. <clears throat> excuse me. Three people are already in the pushing in the mid lane. Another one's coming in. Tarzan's going to step up. And this is against the recall timers. They may even go and take out the entire jungle. Step back. Take this red buff importantly for themselves. These uh, team wide red buff is so incredibly powerful. I've heard, I've heard some analysts put it at above Dragon for power level. It's tough. You know, it's better regen than, than Ocean. It's more damage. It's as much damage as fire. It's better regen than ocean. It's like having a dragon. All right, line of scrimmage is being drawn. Skarner trying to peel right here, but this is only with three teammates, right? There's not that much going on. And Bin actually trying to take the rest of the fight. You can see now, this is the third time this game that Weibo has called turn, turn around and kill and kill Bin, right? So this is clearly a point of emphasis for them that we are not going to wait we're not going to chase the four and take the 5v4. We can expect Bin to step into us. So what we're going to try to see a lot of is control wards, denying vision, right? Expect it from especially these positions, obviously. But as they move forward, do they move forward and leave behind a trail of darkness? Because that will obfuscate Jax's information. He'll only be able to go off of last known information rather than what he actually sees. If they can create the perfect spot where Jax goes into fog thinking that the whole team has pushed ahead, but they've actually come back to him, then they might be able to find an avenue for themselves. <clears throat> All right, flexing their strength. They move up into the fight. Callista is going to be okay here, but look at the strength of the fight here. AoE and Smolder is going to come clean up. This is his dream scenario. He's going to be able to flap flap over the top here. If he doesn't, yeah, he actually might not have the cooldown. They decide to take the, the fight, answer the fight onto the, the Jax. Right? If the call is, hey, they're going to turn around and fight Jax, then our team call needs to be respond to that. If they're going to turn around and fight this guy, then we all need to turn around and defend and take the small fight rather than kiting back. Look at all the vision that is left here in the jungle, trying to get all the paths that the enemies might take into the Baron pit. This is a Varus ultimate. Knight using Flap Flap to get away from the engage from Yone. See a lot of chunk of damage. Flashes out to make sure that he's out of range from the Callista. He's going to outrange him, uh, her for the rest of the fight. Steps away from this. Make sure to not hit this. There we go. There's the extra Flap Flap that I didn't see. And we're not going to chase. This might have been a call where we uh, Weibo might have actually benefited from taking these guys and limit testing and going forward. The issue is like, how do you do that with a Smolder nearby? knowing that you've got execute damage. It's just so unlikely to happen. Weibo dotting their eyes, crossing the T's. They came through, they fought for vision. They were able to fight off this ward, but they didn't get either of these down. So there is near perfect, perfect information on the approach. BLG knows where you're coming. They know that you're bringing everybody here, so they're going to send Jax to split push. Now, if you're Weibo, the correct answer is all in, right? You have to say, make it about a coin flip on the Baron accept those conditions take the fight try to get damage onto smolder if you ever can skarner's going to start peeling off distance and you're going to see yoni's trying to puncture into the back line nico's there on peel duty rand does get the damage here but is it going to be enough because Jax is looking to end the game right now they might not even need him on this side this is a 4v5 and they're still cleaning up so congratulations you got the baron but because you sent two people bottom we clean up the fight and this is a mistake that we see a lot Panicking to answer the push. You do lose the game. Guaranteed, you lose the game if you lose that fight. Recalling necessitates that you lose the fight. You cannot recall. You have to clean up the fight. You have to win the fight and hope that you've done it effectively and efficiently enough that you can come back and defend. When, you, when you're not answering with 4-1-4-1, if you're saying... 5v4, we're going to take this fight, we're going to take the Baron, you have to continue the fight all the way. And you have to say, we are cleaning up, we have to wipe the floor, get them out of here completely, and then we can go answer the Jax. Two people end up going back, which means Jax just steps back, the rest of the team cleans up the fight, and BLG wins the game. Uh, let's go take a peek at 
that 30 minute fight. So look at this approach. This is really, we'll, we'll take a look at this and we'll take a look at the dragon fight, which, which went wrong here. BLG happy to fight on their spikes, right? Three, two and a half, two and a half items across the board. They're, they're absolutely comfortable in their scaling position. Weibo doing the first steps. They come through here, clear vision. They've got the push in mid. Smolder's going to answer it. They're going to get an arc of vision on the beach here. You'd like to do this in two steps. You don't necessarily have the time to do it because of the scaling level of BLG. Uh, but they do step one. They go in and say, all right, we're going to secure this much area. We want to know if you're approaching us. We're going to go for this fight. Now, they end up baiting the play over here because bin like we said always is always looking to flank so they're looking to play for the bin angle this is where zonia has become super powerful so notice this all right they i have to assume they did this on purpose right by running away as that ult's hitting even though skarner gets hit early even though any amount of players get hit because you're running away they don't spend any amount of time in place hitting each other which is what would have allowed the scoop and score so really good positioning from the team saying hey we can take most of this fight but once we get into this approach angle where they're coming back onto us right here this fight we're going to play for corridor of corridor renata ult is extremely dangerous so we need to back off knowing that they can back off from this position and just continue to play from range is just exceptional Right, smolder all on top of this. These guys get hit, but Knight is actually flapping away from this the whole time. Rest of the team's moving. So even though Skarner gets hit, he just ends up retreating, and it's not that big of a deal. And Jax with a perfectly timed flash to get away. They reposition themselves, and the, but then look, they take the same position. They just invert it. Skarner is now going to be the one to take this flanking spot, while the team comes over here and plays for range. Right, Nico on full peel duty. She's not even on engage duty this game. She's just saying, let me peel for my long-range carries. I've got an ultimate that stymies any amount of counteractivity. I like that you're feigning the Skarner right last time around. Skarner tanked for you right here. So perfect for Nico to, to pretend to be that. And then they're able to take the rest of the fight from here. That's fantastic. Let's see if we can check out the you know, dragon spot. All right, so here we go. This is the fight that we were talking about. Take a moment to take stock on cooldowns. Everything that we see here. Callista ultimate is down. Smolder ultimate's down. Varus ultimate is about to be back up. Now, this is the stage in the game. We talked about two items, but no bo boots being completed. They'd be okay saying that from here on out, we can accept fights, but you don't really want them. You want to get to that two item plus boots or to get to that three item stage where you just truly have outscaled your opponents. Playing for this line of scrimmage, you got control ward, control ward. You see a very clear line being drawn here. Bin's looking to approach from this angle. This control ward is meant to spot him coming this way. It will not see him coming this way. They have another zombie ward left over to be able to see the poke coming out of this vision. Notice that when they go and they hit, they step out of the bush and back into the bush. So really good fundamentals here from blg and i love this position your three range this is sort of the formation they had all game your three ranged players in the middle and then you have your brackets what are, what are we going to call this this is actually fairly unique we haven't seen it to this extreme where it's always been skarner or Jax ready to hold the back and three ranged characters holding the front using nico as full peel Right, she's basically taking on the role of a enchanter in a way. I mean, you're not really enchanting a teammate, but you're just saying, I'm ranged, I'll spray something out every once in a while, but my job is to just keep these two safe around me. Sending the clone in to get vision. We like that. All right, so now, now they've broken their formation, right? So this is the first time that we see Skarner stepping back, and now we have Varus over here. So this diamond formation means that you have weak points. They may be trying to send out the Nico clone, but now Knight on Smolder needs to be very selfish in his own position, and he's going to have to come around this way, which means that this area now becomes a potential for a fight. Is it on purpose? Are they trying to time this push with, with Jax coming in? That could be a thing. You say, hey, look, we're a little bit out of position. Come engage on us if you want. Well, Weibo says, we'll call your bluff, if, if it's even a bluff, or it just might be a mistake. 
uh, than props on Breathe to get into this. We talked about him taking this wave, uh, not crashing it, not caring about clearing everything, just killing the front. Even better would be to just clear the back, just clear the casters with one Q, and then teleport in. But he finds the opening. They come into this fight, stepping up. You notice, right? Knight had to be super selfish with his position. And now the fight is moving away from Bin. They're going to continue moving forward. Callista can do it. Everyone on their team can continue trudging forward. The only person who's really not comfortable doing it is Brand. But because the entire tempo of the fight is a pile drive, they're just continuing to press down in this direction. There's really not much counterplay for them. Now Bin starts stepping forward. Now here's the question. Do you continue pressing and try to put them into this fog or do you hold this line of scrimmage? They've won the control battle. You lost a little bit of damage fighting for the control ward here, but they continue moving forward. Light saying, hey, I can go and take this 1v1. That's actually what I want more than anything because I can kite away from whatever threat you have here and I can get into the fight longer. Ends up getting a lot of damage on the front end, can kite around the rest of the fight. They, pick, they turn around to pick up a bin. Flip. Okay, so there we go. Some fight breakdowns. It looks very clear that going into this game, BLG, in this game especially, happy to just outscale. Weibo, correctly looking to take fights. Is that a judgment call or is that just what they've been doing all game, all, all season? Because basically this is what this team does. They take all the fights at all times and... They definitely, you know, reap the rewards of it here. Is it because they correctly identified, like, this is our last chance and here's the fight, here's how we're going to take it? Um, we'll see. The rest of the series is going to be, is going to play out. Can't wait to check out game two. All right, I'll catch you guys there.